Hello, welcome to the first session of surgery, postgraduate medical entrance test practice session. I am Dr. Nesmani and today I am talking about pre and post operative care from the surgical topics. You can find similar sessions for Consult Bridge in the channel youtube.com slash acpgmet. You can use the pause button of the video to finish the reading and play the play button to resume if you feel the video streaming is faster. Similar sessions can be found in the channel so please visit my channel youtube.com slash daily. In the following question and answer session please select the one best response to each of the following question as and when the question appears and find out the correct answer which will be discussed after the question. A pregnant woman in her 32nd week of gestation is given magnesium sulphate for preeclampsia. The earliest clinical indication of hypermagnesemia is loss of deep tendon reflux, flaccid paralysis, respiratory arrest, hypotension, stupor. Freeze the frame, find out the answer, write it down and go to the answer. The answer is loss of deep tendon reflux. The state of magnesium Excess are characterized by generalized neuromuscular depression. Clinically severe hypermagnesemia is rarely seen except in those patients with uh, advanced renal failure treated with magnesium containing antacid. Hypermagnesemia is produced intentionally, however, by obstetricians who use parenteral magnesium sulfate to treat preeclampsia. Magnesium sulfate is administered until depression of the deep tendon reflux is observed. A deficit that occurs with uh, modest hypermagnesemia over 4 mg per liter. Greater elevations of magnesium produce uh, progressive weakness which uh, culminates in flaccid quadriplegia and in some cases respiratory arrest from a paralysis of the chest billows mechanism. Hypotension may occur because of the direct arterial or relaxing effect of magnesium. Changes in mental status occur in the late stages of the syndrome and are characterized by somnolence that progresses to coma. The opposite of this is hypomagnesemia which resembles hypocalcemia produces tetany. Magnesium like calcium is a bivalent uh, positive ion. Magnesium is more inside the cell, calcium is more outside the cell. When the reverse happens, there is electrolyte imbalance and the effects are due to the alteration of the normal electrolyte distribution. Next question, 5 days after an uneventful cholecystectomy, an asymptomatic middle-aged woman is found to have a serum sodium level of 120 mL per liter. Proper management would be administration of hypertonic saline solution, restriction of free water, plasma ultrafiltration, hemodialysis, aggressive diuresis with the furosemide. Write the correct answer and go to the answer. The right answer is restriction of free water. See, acute uh, severe hyponatremia sometimes occurs following elective surgical procedure. It is usually the result of the combination of appropriate postoperative stimulation of, uh, uh, sorry, inappropriate postoperative stimulation of antidote hormone, what is called the CIAD, and uh, injudicious administration of uh, administra uh, excess of uh, free water in the first postoperative days. Total, totally sodium free IV fluid like dextrose and water should be given with the great caution postoperatively since occasionally the resulting hyponatremia can be associated with a sudden death from a flaccid heart or with severe permanent dry, damage. CR can also occur in conditions like meningitis, head injury also, encephalitis also. The condition is usually best uh, treated by withholding free water and allowing the patient to re uh, spontaneously. At levels below 115 mL per liter, seizures or mental obtention may mandate treatment with the hypertonic sodium solution. This must be done with extreme care because the risk of uh, fluid overload with acute pulmonary or cerebral edema is high. Next question is a 50 year old uh, patient presents with uh, symptomatic nephrolithiasis. He reports that he underwent a jejunoileal bypass for morbid obesity when he was 39. One would expect to find pseudo hyperparathyroidism, hyperuric aciduria, hungry bone syndrome, hyperoxaluria, sporadic unicameral bone cyst. What is the answer? Mark it and go to the answer. 
The answer is hyperoxaluria. Any patient who has lost much of the ileum, whether from injury, disease or elective surgery, is at high risk of developing enteric hyperoxaluria if the colon remains intact. Calcium oxalate stones will develop in at least 10% of these patients. The condition results from excessive absorption of oxalate from the colon through two related synergistic mechanisms. One is unabsorbed fatty acid combined with calcium which uh, prevents the formation of insoluble calcium oxalate and allows oxalate to remain available for colonic absorption. And then the unabsorbed fatty acids and bile acids also increases the permeability of the colon to the oxalate. Following surgery, a patient develops oliguria. You believe the patient is hypovolemic, but before increasing in ravenous fluid, you seek corroborative data. This would include urine sodium of 28 mg per liter, urine chloride of 15 mg per liter, fractional excretion of sodium, FENA less than 1, urine uh, serum creatinine ratio of 20, urine osmolality 350 milli osmol per kg. What is the answer? The answer is uh, fractional excretion of sodium, FENA less than 1. When oliguria occurs postoperatively, it is important to differentiate between low output caused by the physiologic response to intravascular hypovolemia and that caused by acute tubular necrosis. The fractional excretion of sodium, FENA, is an especially useful test to uh, aid in this differentiation. Values of uh, FENA less than 1 percentage in an oliguric setting indicate uh, aggressive sodium reclamation in the tubal values above this suggest tubular injury the fractional excretion is a simple calculation urine sodium into serum creatinine divided by serum sodium into urine creatinine that is una into pcr by pna into ucr or you can say una by ucr into pcr by pna in the setting of the postoperative hypovolemia, all findings would be uh, would reflect the kidneys refers to retain volume. The urine sodium would be below 20 mL per liter. Urine chloride would not be helpful except in the metabolically alkalotic patient. Serum osmolality or above uh, above 500 mL small per kg. Urine uh, serum creatinine ratio would be above 40. Now next question, 45 year old woman with a Crohn's disease and a small intestinal fistula develops tetany during second week of parenteral nutrition. Lab findings are calcium 8.2, sodium 135, potassium 3.2, chloride 103, phosphate 2.4, albumin 2.4, pH 7.48 and uh, bicarbonate 25. The most likely cause of the patient's tetany is hyperventilation, hypocalcemia, hypomagnesemia, essential fatty acid deficiency, or focal seizure. What's the answer? Hypomagnesemia. See, magnesium deficiency is common in malnourished patients with patients with larger gastrointestinal fluid loss. The neuromuscular effects resemble those of calcium deficiency like paresthesia, hyperreflexia, muscle spasm, and ultimately tetany. The cardiac effects are more likely uh, like those of hypocalcemia. An ECG therefore provides a rapid means of differentiating between hypocalcemia and hypomagnesemia. Hypomagnesemia also causes potassium wasting by the kidney. Many hospital patients with refractory hypocalcemia will be found to be magnesium deficient. Often this deficiency becomes manifest during the response to parenteral nutrition when normal cellular ionic gradients are restored. A normal blood pH and arterial PCO2 rules out hyperventilation. Serum calcium in this patient is normal when adjusted for the low albumin. Hypomagnesemia causes functional hypoparathyroidism which can lower serum calcium and thus result in a combined defect. Sixth question is the patient with the non-obstructing carcinoma of the sigmoid colon is being prepared for elective resection to minimize the risk of postoperative infectious complication. Your planning should include single preoperative parenteral dose of antibiotic effect against aerobe and anaerobe, avoidance of oral antibiotic to prevent emergence of crucial difficile, postoperative administration of four two to four days of parenteral antibiotics effective against aerobes and anaerobe. Postoperative administration for 5 to 7 days of parenteral antibiotic effective against aerobes and anaerobe. Operative time less than 5 hours. What is the answer? The answer is postoperative administration for 2 to 4 days of, of parenteral antibiotic effective against aerobes and anaerobes. 
So in many clinical and experimental studies have looked at the optimum bowel preparation and pre-operative regime of elective coronary surgery to reduce the post-operative infectious complication of wound infection, intra-abdominal abscess and anastomotic leakage. Currently, a post-operative uh, rate of uh, wound infection of only 5% can be attained by combining mechanical cleaning, oral antibiotic and perioperative parenteral antibiotic. The type of mechanical cleaning does not matter as long as it is effective. Pre-operative oral antibiotic may be administered one or more days prior to surgery and should cover aerobes and anaerobes like neomycin and erythromycin combination. Parental antibiotic effective against aerobes and anaerobes like cefoxetin should be administered on call to the operating room as a single dose and no more than 24 hours postoperatively. Both the antibiotic regime yield maximum prophylaxis without fostering resistant transformation of microbe procedures that require operative time greater than 3 hour or that involve the extra peritoneal rectum are associated with an increased risk of infectious complications. Hope that uh, the session was useful to you. Next session will be uploaded tomorrow. Goodbye from ACPGMAT. Please visit channel youtube.com slash ACPGMAT and you can find similar sessions of the postgraduate entrance practice sessions. Already more than 12 videos have been uploaded. Thank you.